Um, over the summer, we ran some workshops on behalf of hubs and hut bums. We also um, ran workshops, you know, uh, well, presented it yourselves and a number of other places to really to sell the concept of the capstone experience, the culminating experience uh, across the biosciences as an alternative to traditional lab projects. So post-workshop, we also developed some resources. So a choosing capstone guide with skills on how to do it for, for students, uh, a similar one for colleagues, um, a collection of data analysis tools, another one on uh, simulations. And again, those really have taken, actually they've been phenomenal. Those have had about 9,000 hits over the last uh, nine months. So just to recap on, on the sort of the capstones you were showcasing. So there was the more scientific or industry relevant ones, the uh, systematic or scoping reviews, stakeholder opinions, scientific writing, grant proposals, uh, technical reports and innovation projects. There was also a, a different cohort, the ones that were moving more to civic and societal uh, responsibilities and engagement. So education development, science in schools, uh, public engagement, professional education, infographics. And again, the whole concept of team-based and multi-team-based uh, capstones. So what we wanted to do was to see what you know, challenges colleagues had faced over semester one, um, the lessons they'd learned, and also the additional support they thought they might need or colleagues might need uh, particularly for those who were, hadn't offered uh, capstones in semester one, but were planning to do it in semester two. So we ran a, a survey uh, of colleagues. Um, the, the link is there. I'll post it in the chat afterwards. It's still open. So if you haven't uh, responded, we'd really be grateful if you, if you, you know, you could. So we've got a, we've actually got about eighty responses uh, to it, and this is. Uh, the main message that comes through. The first one, which is really pleasing, is that capstones are here to stay. So uh, at the bottom, we've got all the um, different types of non-traditional capstones that you know have been offered across uh, the sector. Um, the blue bars are those that colleagues offered um, in last academic year. The green are those that are offered, being offered this year. And um, the purple are those that are plans for next year. So as you can see, with all capstone types, uh, blue to green, there's been an increase, which, which is great. But more pleasing, as I said, is the purple bars. As you can see from the purple bars, they're you know, actually increasing the number of, of these non-traditional ones being offered uh, in subsequent years, particularly things like education development and the, the more sort of um, civic or societal ones, science in schools, public engagement again. So that, as I said, is really, uh, nice to see that it is not going to be a um you know a short-term fix it's really going to be a, you know a sector-wide change so just you know uh, a couple of comments from colleagues uh, broadening the scope of fun year project can be transformative both for staff and students better reflecting the diverse graduate market and changing expectations of the workforce so again thinking you know again bigger picture most of our students are not going into careers into research and finally, you'd have been inspiration to me personally to rethink the objectives of final year projects. And for that, I'm truly grateful. So again, as I said, colleagues really rethinking the whole ethos, et cetera, of uh, the capstone or final year project. Again, it's going to be offered alongside the, the, uh, the portfolio, a portfolio alongside the additional research projects. So obviously, you know, um, there's been a reduction in individual lab projects, team-based projects, et cetera and um, an increase in some of the uh, more computer-based uh, uh, things. Again, going forward, some changes, again, even on the traditional ones, so a slight decrease in individual labs and more team-based labs. But again, nice to see that we're, you know people are broadening the scope even of um, traditional research projects, so more computer-based bioinformatics, computer models, et cetera and an increase in critical views that's probably coming about from the Society of Biology, Biology now um, accepting critical reviews as a form of accredited capstone. So really sort of the most important thing is the challenges face. So we did a thematic analysis of all the open comment responses we've got. And so the 
questions on the, you know, ch the principal challenge that colleagues faced was really selling the concept and the benefit of capstones to students. So getting students to be happy to deviate from a lab project as they view these as superior to other types or reassuring students that alternative projects are equivalent in terms of skills development and outcomes. The next one, obviously, it, it is, is colleagues. Again, selling the concept to colleagues, um, you know, it's out of the comfort zone of many. Um, so it's, you know, it's giving staff knowledge of other formats and the confidence uh, in actually delivering them. And then, you know, most of the others are exactly the same. It, you know, it, it, you know, high quality resources, it's rubrics, it's um, training for, for students and, and, and staff, etc., and managing staff expect sorry, student expectations. Think about hints and tips. Then um, B1 obviously is working together. So partnerships not only between students and staff, but between staff and, and you know, and also students and students. So co-creation of projects with students working together with like-minded individuals to share, create shared resources, and really believe in yourself and your students. So sharing ideas to save time, try and speak to someone who's run something similar in the past, either internally or externally, and have the confidence to try a new format. Students in control of the project and drive it forward accordingly with their enthusiasm and determination. And that's what I've really found, you know, students if you give them free reign can be extremely creative and think about things that you haven't thought of. Um, and they actually relish that, that opportunity to give take ownership uh, for their projects. And really, you know, using them to, if you're introducing a new format of Capstone, use them as co-developers. So the first couple of years, it could be a co-development rather than just doing the Capstone uh, per se. And the second one is the second main one is selling the concept um, to um, both staff and students. So selling the quant qualities of different project formats that equip students with the necessary skills for the workplace and career progression beyond graduation. Student mindset and life science degrees is lab based experience is essential for all employment opportunities and a lovely quote coming up clear communication what students will get out of alternative projects. Stress from the beginning that critical thinking and project planning skills may actually be more important to future academic work. Almost anybody can hold up a pet, but planning an experiment is even more difficult. And I think the key one for me is thinking about how you assess them, learning outcomes and work backwards. Once you've got the learning outcomes and assessment sorted, everything else really sort of you know, falls into place. So going forward, we you know, we're not stopping there. There was a number of things that uh, colleagues uh, required or, or would like sort of help with. So I think you know sharing assessment criteria. We've always you know shared some, um, and we've got a call out at the moment to gather other assessment criteria that colleagues have created, and we'll be sharing those alongside uh, resources and guidance. But I think it's an opportunity to take it to the next stage. You know, why stop here? Um, and I'm particularly interested in the emerging world and frugal education, so they do a lot of work in the emerging world. So let's create some new formats of capstones, particularly moving towards, you know, civic and societal uh, mission statements, etc. Things that are globally relevant, address global grand challenges and UN sustainable development goals. So thinking about interdisciplinary education, you know, working with other disciplines and even transnational. Why can't we have capstone students working in two different countries, Global North and Global South together on the same sort of SDG project? And again, you know, thinking about the same time creating frugal education resources and education, you know, things that can be actually done or used uh, in, the, in uh, the Global South. So the grand plan, you know, and something I'd love to achieve would be to develop a global uh, interdisciplinary transnational community of practice uh, with regard to capstones. So if you want to be involved in any of that, or if you want resources that as they are sort of, of as we collate them, um, email me or just drop, you know, d.i.lewis at leeds.ac.uk or put me, put an email, your email address in the chat and I'll pick it up from there. And finally, just to say that, as I said, the survey is still open. If you haven't um, done it, um, then I'll completely, we really appreciate um, 
if you would uh, complete it for us. On that, I will hand it back to you, uh, Nigel. That's brilliant. Thanks, Dave. Uh, I had a question, actually. Sort of the, the numbers of students that are going on to do non-traditional um, employments are not lab-based, research-based. Yeah. Are you seeing a correlation between the results you've got so far and the, the types of projects that are being offered? Are they matching up to the skills that are in different uh, types of capstones? So you're seeing, say, 30% of students go on to do research. Are you seeing 30% of projects being research-focused and the other 70 being split? I think with, and I'm actually seeing it in our, with our own students, you know, we've always sold our projects on skills rather than actual, you know, what you're actually doing. Um, but we've actually, you know, we've moved all our projects to totally dry this semester. Um, but, and we get them to do personal reflections and really they are, is actually opening their eyes to opportunities. You know, they're thinking more skills now and careers than they are thinking about bench-based research. So I think that's the direction of travel. Yeah, it's really interesting. Yeah. Uh, and David had a question. He said, uh, what staff training did people put in place? There wasn't actually that much detail in there. I think it was very much um, either providing, you know, sharing resources that were available or training videos, et cetera, working in partnership with others and using the experience of colleagues that, um, you know, either internally or externally. I know there are, you know, say Glenn Husley in, in Kiel, you know, created training videos um, for for systematic views in place. So I think it was different things in different places. But it, I, I take your point. Yes, it would be nice to see actually share what training people did do as as a you know as a suggestion for the way forward. And you know, we're running a second survey in um, the summer. You know, which will start to get outcome graduate outcomes as well out of that. And we could actually put that question in. Um, and again, I think that'd be very useful to colleagues going forward. Yeah, I think that'd be really useful. And Sue's just put in the chat, everyone said how useful the shared how-to guides have been. So I think there's definitely something there that we could tap into in terms of one page, brief summaries of how projects have been done to host. So that'd be really useful. Uh, Ian had a question as well. Is, has, have you or the pandemic changed the narrative at all? Are we seeing a shift in academics, managers, PSRBs, et cetera, who were fixated on the tr uh, traditional capstone projects, or are we seeing a sort of a mind shift, mind shift across the sector? I think we're still going to get the hardcore um, naysayers. That said, um, I've been working in our, you know, at capstone, tradition, non traditional capstones in my place for 15 years. And this year, having, you know, particularly with them having been forced to do them, they've suddenly seen the benefits. You know, it's, it has opened eyes. There are still those that are, are, anti if we talk the talk about accrediting bodies then um obviously the rsb has changed its criteria totally so it now covers anything and the ibms is moving down the road you know that they're halfway there and i think from you know sue could probably if sue's there sue do you want to actually comment on that because you you're more in tune with their thoughts um yeah i can do <clears throat> thanks dave i just put a comment in the chat to say that they are trying to be as pragmatic as they can um, so I was part of a working group last year that was looking at the accreditation criteria um, and changing the wording of the accreditation criteria anyway for MSCs and BSCs. That's kind of on hold because of the pandemic at the moment. Um, but they have also said, as long as you're meeting the programme learning outcomes, it's not many programmes that would say the programme learning outcome is they've got to do a wet project, they've got to stand in a lab and prepare. So as long as your programme learning outcome is about data analysis, interpretation, evaluation, the higher level skills that we're assessing, then their standpoint is as long as you're assessing the programme learning outcomes that you said you have and they're getting lab skills elsewhere, fine. Yes, um, just one other question there, Jeffrey. Yes, that is, you know, when I talked about team and multi-team, then that is, you know, it, it is merging things, to different formats together. So it could either be within a lab where, you know, you've got somebody working at the systems level, the cellular level, et cetera, or teams working at the three different levels, or we've actually had them, you know, looking at the pharmacology of uh, illegal highs. So we've had one group in the lab doing uh isolated tissue work, we've had another group doing science comm work, we've had another group doing surveys of, of, of opinions. So again, you know, there's the potential, all those types I, you know, I, I outlined, there's a the potential to actually mix them up and merge them and have a sort of two or three teams working on the same sort of you know, concept, each doing a sort of different format of capstone. 
So sort of good. Uh, Dom's put a question up as does this result in lots of different assessment profiles for the final year project module? No, we started off with two, one for critical reviews and one for everything else. And we moved to an academic paper. We've actually now broadening it. So we have now our students have the option of doing, choosing the most appropriate assessment tool for them. So they can do an academic paper and that could be a science com or pure science, et cetera. They can do a grant proposal. They can write a commercial or technical report. They can uh, do an, a reflective e-portfolio. And I think the reflective e-portfolio is probably the way to go in that would encompass a hell of a lot of different project formats, bringing the criticality, et cetera, um, to it. And, and again, you know, it's, it's another skill that would, would actually be, you know, hugely beneficial for them. And also probably most appropriate tool to really showcase their capstone outputs themselves. I think that's, yeah, it's really interesting. I mean, the reflective element is just becoming so important as well because it's, it's you know, such a graduate skill that's needed. So, so um, Dave, thank you very much. If you want to put your email address in and link to the survey into the chat after you've finished then I'm sure we'll get a few okay, more people. Okay, great, thank you. Yeah, um, and definitely be 100% happy to be involved in that project in, in some way. So yeah. thank you very much for your presentation.